just gave this talk at PyCon two days ago, but they didn't let me drink beer during, so <laughs> I, I think I'm going to have a better time today. Um, so I cut it short. If, if you want to see more, there, uh, the slides are on uh, SlideShare. There's a video, but um, I've been a developer for eight years now working uh, in giant banks and tiny startups and five different programming languages. And I've seen a lot of technical debt. I've seen some things. I think anyone who writes software has seen some things. So uh, what exactly is technical debt? It's a series of bad decisions that are both business and technical. And they lead to architecture and code that's really error prone. So you need to use more resources, but you end up accomplishing less. But really, in layman terms, it's what decisions were made in the past that prevent me from getting shit done today. <laughs> so some causes of it are me and you. <laughs> I hope that doesn't come as a surprise to anyone. So if you've written code, if you've written 10 lines of code, you've probably in some way created technical debt. So some mistakes that I made early on were I didn't really see the value in unit tests. So my code worked. I, doesn't that mean I'm done? No, actually. Um, I didn't really know how to say no to features, so I ended up just creating a lot of feature bloat. And I, um, I, I kind of ended up giving overly estimate, uh, optimistic estimates because I didn't value tests or, you know, I'd be like, I'll get this done in an hour. And it, it wouldn't really account for the tests or iterating or refactoring or anything like that. Um, I didn't really care what my design looked like or if my code was reusable. Um, I promise I've learned the error of my ways since then. So. Things that kind of lead to that is a time crunch. It's like, ooh. <laughs> you know, it's like this project was due yesterday, so I'm just going to fix it now, and I'm going to, you know, I'll clean up my mess tomorrow. So how many of you have said that? And how many of you go back tomorrow to fix or clean it up? Like four people? <laughs> I, I see you. You can raise your hand high. Yeah. It's a good thing. We should applaud. Um, so all this ends up in some really unneeded complexity. Uh, I've, I've worked with some developers who think that lines of code committed equal the amount of work that they've accomplished. I will tell you that this is very much not true. So, you know, sometimes if you come up with a really simple way of doing it, you're like, Maybe I missed something. Maybe you know it needs to do some of these other things. Or if it's too simple, I haven't proved how smart I am. Or you know, simplicity is a really, really good thing. Uh, even for yourself, if it's just you, when you come back two months later, and you're like, "What was I even doing?" Right? Simple is good. Less code is good. So. So other things that can cause it is a lack of understanding. So I think we've all gone through this workflow. Step one, we have a problem. Step two, we look up how to do it on Stack Overflow. And then we copy and paste it into our code base. And, there, and it works, right? It's great. But no, question mark, question mark, question mark. At some point in the future, you might end up with some serious bugs. So. Don't put it in your code and forget about this. If you're going to do it, you're going to have a really bad time. So even if it's just some hot fix, make sure you're, you understand it and you, know, you, you have some idea of why someone else's fix works before you just paste it into your code base. Um, and, and then technical debt ends up leading to this culture of despair. So this code base is already a heaping pile of trash. And who's going to notice if I just put this broken bottle on top and walk away? <laughs> um, so even if you know it was a heaping pile of trash before you got there, um, 
And that's not an excuse to try to sneak things on top. So some red flags. Um, how do you know you have it? Code smells. So code smells are not bugs, but really they're just an indication of a deeper problem. Things like uh, lots of duplicated code, really long methods, classes. Um, my rule of thumb is if it doesn't fit on one screen, then it's too long. You shouldn't really have to uh, scroll. Um, and, then, and then that like contrived complexity that I talk about, talked about. So a few more code smells, half implemented features. Um, you know, someone thought we needed that at the time. We didn't, but it's still in the system. Um, no documentation, poor documentation. So some cowboy coder, you know, is like, I'm just going to hack all this stuff out. But really, that means your code base isn't optimized for teamwork. It's optimized for that one person. So that's not a great thing. Um, and also, if you're writing Python and you have doc strings and you use something like Sphinx for uh, code generation, then you get a lot for free. I'm going to put down my beer so I don't look like an alcoholic in this video. <laughs> uh, some more comments about code. Um, incorrect comments, uh, no tests, broken tests. Um, so if you're trying to skim the code of something, you don't have time to sit there and read it and you know really deep dive. If you have a bunch of wrong comments littered around, you're going to get a bad idea of what's going on. And then, in my opinion, as far as tests go, if, if you're not going to be diligent about testing, broken tests are so much worse than having no tests at all, because I think we all hate seeing that little red X, right? So if you try to run tests and you just get negative reinforcement, you get these red Xs all the time, you're, you're not going to want to run them. So if your tests are broken and you have some serious code problems, just take them out until you can get things sorted. Um, so poor documentation, you're thinking, you know, how bad can it really be? Well, so I, I borrowed this, uh, this sample code from Raymond Hedinger, but I, I changed some things. So we have a pizza factory, and it serves this like awesome, organic, gluten-free pizza. But we, uh, we ran out of dough. And uh, you know, we didn't really have time to do things right. So we're just going to comment that out. And instead, we're going to serve this like GMO, gluten-full, awful dough. So you know, if, if you're skimming through this, uh, I think it would be pretty easy to miss something like that. Um, I hope that, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm going to stand in this little square too. Um, I hope that that kind of gets the point across. So you can also have some architecture and design, I'll also call them smells. Um, there's parts of the code base that no one wants to touch, so you couldn't pay me enough money to work on the core, that kind of thing. or. If changing code in one area of the code base causes something completely unexpected to break, um, and this can result in some pretty severe and unexpected outages. So good design, it's pretty easy to implement features. Bad design, you just feel like you're shoe shoehorning things into the system. And it's, you know, it doesn't have to apply all the time, but try to think of it as an 80-20 rule. So if 80% of the time adding new features with the current design is easy, then you're probably doing something right. Uh, some Python-specific smells. If functionality changes, but variable names don't. I hope you all know why that would be a bad thing. So we have some employees, but someone comes along and changes employees to Bob somewhere, and then you want to get the first employee, and in this case, you're expecting John, but really, you're just going to get a big old capital letter B. So not at all what you'd expect and could probably cause some subtle bugs. So um, if you're changing data types, you know, try, try to keep your naming consistent and go through and check all the places where that's used. 
Um, monkey patching. Who's done some monkey patching before? <laughs> Get out of here. Not welcome. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, so, you know, if you're doing something like this at a, outside of a test, you might want to reevaluate why. Uh, what's that? Um, so if you're like patching some sort of library or something, you know, maybe you should just rewrite the feature or try a different library. Um, decorators, uh, so what exactly does that decorator do? In this case, mine is evil and just changes the return value of the method to false. Uh, decorators are an extremely powerful tool and they can mess with uh, any arguments passed into the method, return values. Um, Decorators are not usually evil. They're actually pretty great, but if you're using decorators from some code base, uh, especially if they're homebrewed, maybe you should go take a look and see what they do and understand what side effects they can cause before uh, using them. Circular dependencies. Um, if you're doing this, chances are there's something horrible going on. Just to, If you're doing this, just to avoid having circular dependencies, there's a good chance you have a serious design problem. So, how do you battle this monster? And I, I just want to make a point that bad code, code smells, these things are not technical debt, but they, they're just like, they're an indication that you probably have some, some deeper problems going on. So first, you know, don't point fingers. If, um, if Joe, you know, some guy that worked there four years ago is the cause of technical debt and he quit, well, he hasn't worked there in four years, so you can't really point your finger at him. Uh, if he still works there, you still should not point your finger at him because technical debt is a team-wide problem. And uh, everyone really needs to be a part of the solution, so take responsibility. Um, it happens work together, so come up with some code standards. Uh, for us Python developers, Pepe is a great start as to how your code should look, but there are some nuances, so maybe someone likes 80 character lines and someone likes 120 character lines, and whatever it is, just pick something and stick with it. Um, other, programming, other programming languages don't really have it, so you know if you have other stuff in your code base, create code standards for that as well. Uh, I like to say that a, a really elegant code base is one that has been worked on by multiple people, but looks like it was written by one. So if you have that, you're very lucky. And then pair programming is, is really huge. Um, you know, sometimes you're working on some code and in the back of your mind, you're like, that's kind of a bad idea. But when you're pair programming, you think something about is a bad idea and you skip over it, chances are someone will tap you on the shoulder and say, actually, that's, that's a bad idea. Let's work through that. Um, and then code reviews are the, the golden standard. So uh, my rule of thumb is unless something is on fire, like literally like that garbage can is burning down or something, or you're, you're losing a lot of money, uh, unreviewed code should really never be merged into master. Um, it's, it's, it's like those little things, you know, those little excuses and those little ways that, that bad things sneak into your code that, that kind of end up adding up. So uh, stay accountable. Unit and integration tests are huge. Um, Pre-commit hooks, so run your tests before um, committing your code. Continuous integration. I'm a, a huge fan of Travis. Uh, so you'll have a little green thing or a little red thing on your pull request, and it's great. Uh, you know, if Travis says your test failed, well, then just don't, don't uh, merge that branch back into master. Now, how do you sell all this 
to management, it sounds like it kind of takes a lot of time. Um, you really have to tell your manager that when you take time to tackle technical debt, it improves productivity in the long term. Uh, features are easier to add. Your code is better. It's easier to maintain. Uh, there's less bugs, you know, less problems, less failures. And um, managers like charts. So I made uh, this one. I call it if the if it's not broken, the why fix it chart. So we have this like red project that doesn't maintain any, uh, like doesn't have any tests, doesn't tackle technical debt. Uh, on the left, we have cost, and the, on the bottom is time. So when, it, when we first start on this red project, it's like, look at how fast we're doing things. And as time goes on, the cost for features skyrockets. Well, that green line is the, the project with the tests and the project where people go and clean up after themselves. And so it kind of starts out at this higher cost, but then it also maintains that same cost. Uh, so over time, uh, the cost is generally cheaper. Uh, managers also like skiing, so you can explain it as a ski rental problem. You know, you're going skiing for an unknown number of days. It costs a dollar a day to rent, ten dollars to buy. So renting is, you know, not maintaining your technical debt and just kind of skirting along. Whereas you could just pay that ten dollars, tackle some debt, and then you you own those skis. So uh, there's there's a little Wikipedia article at the end, and there's some other uh, fun examples about ski rental problems. Um, so, so there's another cost to having a ton of technical debt in your system. It's, you know, hiring developers is really hard, and you need us more than we need you. And technical debt uh, really frustrates developers, it makes us super mad. And frustrated developers are more likely to quit. So, you know, if if uh, if you're looking for a new job and it's a smaller company and you have the opportunity, uh, a word of advice I can give you is see if you can sign an NDA and then pair program with someone or take a look at their code base before you sign their offer and check for some of these red flags. Um, if they're all there, maybe you don't want to take that job. So. You know, some debt is inevitable. Every project kind of has a tolerance. You know, try to tackle it, but don't be a perfectionist. Um, you can use these just uh, arguments to justify this to managers, but like, in the end, if they're still like no, you can say, well, someone who maintains my code might be like a serial killer, and if I don't maintain it, and they're just gonna like come get me, they know where I live. So, tell them it's for your safety. Um, so pay down the debt. You want to prioritize. Um, what are the biggest pain points? Try to tackle those first. Uh, the shelf life is also something that you should take into consideration. If like you're working on banking software and it has a long shelf life, pay more attention towards tackling debt. If you're working on a Yo app and it has a shelf life of five minutes, then you can probably afford to accrue some. Um, so, just like with monetary debt, pay off the high interest stuff first. Uh, you can also be strategic about it. So, like with that Yo example, you know, if you made Yo and you paid no technical debt and your thing was super successful for, you know, three months, well, then you, you kind of won. You got, you know, something for nothing. Um, I'm not going to chat about refactoring, but if you'd like to... Um, come talk to me about it afterwards. So I'm just going to leave you guys with some, uh, a few tips. Uh, to make time, if you have a small team, try to devote a week every six to eight weeks. If you have a medium-sized team, maybe one person on rotation for a week. If you have a large team, you can kind of afford to maybe spend 10% of everyone's time cleaning up. Um, and then I'm going to leave you with my, one of my favorite quotes. So there's this Boy Scout rule, and uh, the Boy Scout rule is always leave a campground cleaner than when you found it. So when you go camping in the woods and you see you know, a broken bottle, pick it up and take it with you. Uh, Uncle Bob Martin 
has applied a similar role to programming, and he says, always check a module in cleaner than when you found it, cleaner than when you checked it out. So if you have that heaping pile of trash, maybe instead of hiding something on top, you should pick it up and take it with you. Uh, and then you're going to be like super frustrated doing this. You know, your technical debt might have built up over months, days, years. You know, it could feel like untangling a ball of yarn. So really, you should expect to be frustrated, and please don't give up. So thank you guys very much. Thank you.